If you're looking to sweeten up your summer, try these pineapple teriyaki brats. Ben Gehring's gonna help me show you how. Today we are going to be making some pineapple teriyaki brats and for this process I have a very special guest. Please welcome Master Meat Crafter Ben Gehring from Gehring's Meat Market, which is a local market right here in Wisconsin. Hey, how's it going Jed? Oh, it's so good and I'm so excited to eat some of these brats. Tell us about the cut of meat that we're going to be using real quick here. So here we got some shoulder butts from uh, pork and uh, we'll be deboning them mm -hmm. and cutting them up, getting them ready for the grinder to make our pineapple teriyaki brats. Awesome, and what, what is good about the, the pork butt that lends itself well to sausage? The fat to lean ratio is a really good blend for making sausage. Um, you know, you want a good fat content in your fresh sausage, and, but you also want that nice lean meat too. Mm -hmm. um, and the pork shoulder butt um, just provides a great Great, it's a good uh, balance all within yes. one cut. So yep. that's what we're going to use today. So the first thing we have to do is we got to get these bones out and we got to break these down to some grinder sized pieces. Yep. So we're going to walk through that next. So the blade, you usually get about halfway through the shoulder mm -hmm. when you start touching the blade. So you can cut this, this boneless half off like so. And then a little easier to work with. Yeah. You still have that blade. You know, you still got the, the knuckle bone here and the, and the and the blade bone there. But it's a much smaller piece and smaller smaller piece, easier, easier to work with. Yep, yep, awesome. absolutely. So then you can come in on an angle like this between your blade and your knuckle, mm -hmm. and then you could follow that bone a lot easier as well. So you can come down. I think a lot of this for people at home too is that this is a great little how-to about where the bone is yep. and how to get around it. Yep. But take your time, mm -hmm. make sure you're doing it right, not cutting your fingers, and make sure yep. you're getting as much of that meat off of the bone as possible. Yep, right? yep, absolutely. Yep. You know, so then, you know, you got that there. You can come back down the blade again. So becoming a, a master meat crafter, what does that entail? Um, it's a program um, designed by UW Madison and Jeff Sindelar, and there's uh, very short courses that he puts on over two year span, and you kind of learn different um, aspects of the, the industry. Sure. Um, like, uh, you know, there's one where we did uh, emulsification, where you, you learn about emulsification in, in products like that, like hot dogs, bologna, sure. products like that. There's a uh, uh, like a dry curing one, dry oh, wow. fermented sausage yeah. one. You know, there's uh, cured and smoked like ham. Mm -hmm. um, there's microbiology, you know, all, all aspects of, of the meat industry. Um, it's great learning tool, um, great course. Um, really fun course to, nice. to go through. All right, so we, we got everything diced up, broken yep. down, deboned, all that stuff. So we're gonna set up our grinder. And our first grind is going to be a 3 8 inch plate which is a pretty standard first grind for a size like this. You want that good particle definition in your sausage mm -hmm. and stuff like that, so you don't want a lot of smearing and stuff yep. in, your, in your brats. You want, you want to see the fat and the lean separate in a fresh sausage. After our 3 8 inch plate grind, we're gonna reset the grinder for a 3 16 for our second grind, and that's when we'll add our inclusions and get to stuffing. So after breaking this pork butt down, we set it in the freezer for, what was it, about 15 minutes? Yeah. Why, did, why did we want to do that? Um, you want to get the meat cooled down properly for grind. Um, the, the grinder creates heat. Um, you don't want smearing in your product, uh, so it makes it easier to grind and a better product in the end when you chill it back down. Awesome. Well, let's get to it. We're set up with a 3 8 inch plate here for the first grind. Just let the machine do its work, feed a little in. So you can see a, a real good particle definition from the fat and the lean, you know, with chilling the meat down, it, it helps improve that dramatically. So we've got some really good definition here oh, yeah. still between the protein and the fat, which means our meat is cold and it's grinding really well, right? Yes. Yep. Like I said, you can see, you can see that, that fat and that lean separation there. Mm -hmm. That's really what you want in, in, your, in your product. Awesome. All right, so we're gonna switch out the plate really quickly here to keep everything cold. We're gonna move to a 3 16 which is a slightly smaller grind, and we'll go for the second grind. All right. All right, we're ready grind. to start up on our second grind. So yeah, we got 3 16 All right, start her up. 
Still got really good fat yep. and uh, protein separation. Try not to overwork the grinder. The heat, you know, if it works harder, then you know, get more heat, get more smearing. And make sure that that throat is full, though, that you're running out of product. Because if if that plate and knife run dry, it's going to cause more heat, wear down your plate and knife faster as well. So you want to make sure you have product in there, you know, so you don't wear down your your, your grinder. We are using our 358 Pineapple Teriyaki Brat Seasoning, which comes with the seasoning and the dehydrated pineapple inclusion. We sell this in a 25 pound B unit, which means it's good for 25 pounds of meat. We only have about 17, almost 18 pounds here, so we broke it down to how much we need for that batch. So when I like to mix my seasoning, um, you know, spread the meat out a little bit so you can get a good in the tub, so you can kind of get it distributed in the whole batch evenly um, and we're using the water to help evenly dis distribute the seasoning um, through the whole whole batch so we'll start with uh, sprinkling some seasoning in sound good yeah go ahead all right so like i said just kind of carefully sprinkle a little bit in and if you, if you do about half and start mixing you start mixing about half of it in and trying to get it worked in the meat a little bit um, that helps too to get it more equally distributed and then water. We normally use 3% just for regulations and stuff like that, but if you're making it at home, I like to add a little bit more water to the batch just to help that seasoning and stuff really mix through the whole batch better. Yeah. Um, just makes it easier for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, getting, getting the seasoning evenly distributed throughout the meat block is, it's one Crucial. of the most important processes just because you want every bite of every sausage to be the same. Yeah. So it's important to take your time and make sure that it all gets out and is nice and even. And with, with fresh sausage like brats, you don't want to overmix because um, you don't want to get uh, too much smearing and you want that particle definition to stay as whole as you can. So it's, it's a tricky situation where you, you, you want to make sure the seasoning mix good, but you don't want to overmix you know, where you, where you ruin the appearance of your brat. Sure. Good mix, fold it over, work it over, works good. Um, you know, if you see, if you, if you can kind of see, you know, there's a little bit colored variation yep. between that, you know, it means, you know, okay, try to mix that seasoning in a little bit better in those spots and areas. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm mixing with my mixer, that's kind of what I look for, is once I finally have all that seasoning kind of uniform color, yep. that's usually when I know my batch is good to go. Yeah. So are you looking for any level of protein extraction here? Not real, not with a fresh sausage, you okay. don't. Um, just for this, like I said, for the simple fact that you don't want, you want that those particles to kind of stay separate when, when you get that protein extraction, you know, and that that, that uh, binding and stuff like that, you get a little more smearing and stuff like mm -hmm. that. Um, whereas brat, you want more crumbly yeah. texture. Coarse cut. Kind yes, of. Yep. yes. That's kind of, you know, your standard brat texture. At this point, we're all mixed up and we're ready to stuff these into some casings and get these linked up. We have our sausage stuffer set up and our stuffer has a capacity of 15 pounds. With this being about an 18 pound batch, we're gonna break this into two batches for stuffing. We're gonna load up the stuffer here. Do you have any tricks or anything that you like to do when you're... I like to pack, make sure you get it packed in nice and tight mm -hmm. just to avoid air pockets in your yep. sausage and stuff like that. So make sure when you're, when you're loading up your hopper to make sure you have that nice and packed in there good. Cool. So take your time on this and Make sure you do it right, because it'll save you in the long run. So this pineapple teriyaki brat is actually something that you guys make in your shop and sell retail. Right? We do. We see, actually we sell a lot of it right now. It's it's a very popular brat that we we carry. Um, people love it. Um, kind of new flavor, and you know who doesn't love pineapple and teriyaki with pork? Yeah, it's a really great flavor combination. It's sweet. It's salty. And you were saying you actually take this blend. Uh, which is designed for a bratwurst, a fresh bratwurst, uh, and you turn it into a snack stick. Yep, so we doctor it up a little bit with some curing, curing salt and some thor sodium thorbate and other products to make like a snack stick with it. Um, we had a little some jalapeno flakes and, and red pepper flakes just to give it a little kick That's and like awesome. a little sweet knot stick. Um, it's a very popular stick that we carry as well. So it's, it's nice to take a, a, a seasoning blend like this and be able to use it in multiple products yeah. um, makes my job easier keeping inventory and, and it's, a, it's a great product so if I can use it in other products as well, it's a win-win for all of us. Awesome. So, all right. All right. 
for casings for brats, I'm a big believer in natural casing. Um, just for the, the texture and the bite you get off of a natural casing, is just you can't beat it. Um, I know they make some good collagen cases out there now, nowadays, but to me, uh, a, a regular old-fashioned brat needs a, a natural casing on it. With a natural hog casing, you have to soak these and get them ready for the stuffer. Yep, I, uh, I like to pre-soak my casings at least a half hour to an hour before stuffing. Uh, it makes it easier to work with. Um, you also, you want to get some of that salt that's on there yeah. off um, when you when you use them, so water helps get the salt off. It makes the casings a little more pliable, easier to work with uh, when you're stuffing sausage. Awesome. I like to find the end and find the opening and get some water in there. You can see how water is going into the casing. That's going to help um, slide the casing on the horn easier, which makes it easier to work with. Um, yeah, you can see it kind of sits in the casing like that, and that'll just work itself through as... as we slide it onto the horn here, yep. yep, yep, so. So in this pack is a, a hank of casings, correct? Yes. So a hank in the meat industry, usually uh, a good standard, a hank is good for about 100 pounds, so we do have customers that come in that like to make sausage and stuff like that, so um, when they buy casings and stuff like that, if they tell me their batch size, I can kind of gauge off how much casing to give them. You can tie the end if you want on the hog casing. Um, typically with brats, I'll just leave a little extra off and start when I start stuffing, I'll just uh, try to form, you know, form it back and just cut it off um, after I have it stuffed. You want to make sure you fill it, try to not get any pockets, and use your hand to kind of uh, have pressure on the casing as it's coming out. Obviously you don't want it super tight where you bust the casing, but you don't want it so loose where you're wasting casing as well. One thing that helps um, when stuffing is to keep the casings loose and separate on the horn. When they're all jumbled together, they tighten up more and then it's hard to, with the feel of getting the, the sausage out of the casing there. So. Sure. Actually, I'm gonna stop it right here before we start squishing the, the pineapple in there and we'll back it out and refill reset and we'll stuff some more. All right, now that we have all our, our sausages stuffed in the casing, we'll make our, our links. So um, one thing that I like to do, um, you know, get a little bit on the end here. So when you're pushing, you know, you're not, you're not busting the casing and stuff like that. So I do like to leave a little bit of a strand on at the end. Um, so you pinch, pinch, get the size you're looking for roughly to fit in a brat bun and twist. Tell us a little bit about the market and your dad, and, and tell us about Gary. So my father grew up on a dairy farm, and you know, on the farm they'd butcher and stuff like that uh, on their farm back in the day. That's how they, they did it. Um, so he always loved the butchering aspect of it, and, and when uh, out of school and stuff like that, he started working for a local butcher shop, and uh, eventually he bought a bar. Thought well, it was a good idea, but then he opened up a, a little meat market in the back, and. Uh, found out that the meat market was a little more fun than the bar. Sure. So uh, ended up buying a farm field, putting up a building, starting a meat market, and uh, you know, 40 years later, you yeah. know, we've grown. So he uh, um, you know, pretty much started with nothing and made it himself. And it's a, it's a family business. You know, my brother, my older brother works there um, full time and, and a lot of cousins and family members that help in the business as well, sure. uh, as, as well as other employees as well. But uh, very family oriented business and, and try to stay local you know with the community and stuff like that yeah. and, and really like to, to preach that so so we do we do a lot of uh, custom slaughtering um, a quarters of beef and stuff like that that people really like um, that's a big part of their business we do have a, a small retail store um, that we do offer retail products for people just coming in wanting to buy a pack of brats or a sure. steak or something like that but uh, now that we're all cased up we're gonna go through these sausages and use our sausage pricker to eliminate some of those air pockets that built up during the casing process and why do we want to go through and do that um, just like I said for for like when cooking and stuff like that it, it relieves some of the, the pressure and stuff from the, the casing and, and uh, makes it a little easier for cooking and stuff sure. like that so after we're done eliminating these air pockets, they're gonna be ready for the grill. So we got some vegetables and we're gonna get these on the grill, char them up, and then we'll be finally ready to taste. We got all of our brats linked up. We eliminated those air pockets and then we cut them into individual links. And now we're ready to go to the grill. 
Can't wait. We got some peppers, some mushrooms that we're gonna grill them up with, and we'll be ready to try these in no time. After a number of hours of making our sausage today, we are finally ready to try our pineapple teriyaki brats. And again, for this we used a straight pork butt, which is readily available in a lot of markets, supermarkets, or local butchers. Um, and we used that with our 358 pineapple teriyaki seasoning, and um, they smell amazing. Oh, yeah. We brought these up to about 155 degrees internal temperature, which is that final temperature that you want for a fresh pork, yep. uh, fresh browers. And it's Get into it. You ready? Yeah, All right. Here we go. We got a nice little smoke ring on there from oh, the yeah. pellet grill. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Oh yeah. They look super good. So and you can see the uh, the little chunks of pineapple, pineapple in there. Yep. Oh yeah. It looks like they hydrated nice nicely. And juicy. We got a little bit of a smoke ring from our pellet oh, grill. Yeah. Super excited. Totally. All right, go ahead. Get in there. Oh yeah. Cheers. Oh, it smells great. Cheers. So you get a good bite from the natural casing. You know, it's not rubbery or papery texture. It's a real nice, clean, clean bite. Um, uh, that, that teriyaki and that pineapple just work so good together. It works so good together. Yeah, it's it's a great combination of sweet and salty. Mm -hmm. Kind of get that those Asian flavors in there. You get a little bite from the the pineapple chunks. Mm -hmm. Well, Ben, thank you so much for coming in and showing us this handcrafted, wonderfully delicious brat that you made for us today. Um, you do sell these at Gehrings, correct? Yes, we do. Awesome. So you have that kind of handcrafted local feel for this. And where can where can they learn more about your meat market? Well, we have a website, GehringsMeatMarket.com, kind of lists all different aspects and, and things we have at our shop. Um, so if you have any, any questions, you can always call us too. Awesome. It's on the website. Awesome. So yeah, if you're ever in town or you are local to the Wisconsin area, do check them out. And if you are interested in this 358 pineapple teriyaki brat seasoning, you can head to psseasoning.com as well. If you like this video and want to see more, please click subscribe. You can also check us out on pretty much all forms of social media. Till next time, I'm Chef Jed. Thank you to Ben. Thank you. Thanks for watching.